Hi, I'm Sabrina Carpenter, and this is The First Time. The first time I met Diplo was a very funny story of uh, me wanting to meet Hosier, because I'm a, a big fan of Hosier, and I believe I was at like the iHeartRadio Awards. I was with a friend. We were like sitting at the same table, and I was like, oh, I really want to meet Hosier, but like I don't have any reason to. We were like walking sort of closer to his table, and then we passed another table that had a man that seemed really nice in a cowboy hat sitting there, and, um, <laughs> and then he was like, "Oh, you guys trying to? You guys are trying to meet Hosier?" And we were like, "Yeah, but like I don't really know." And he was like, "I can introduce you." And we were like, "Do you know him?" And he was like, "No, um, but I can introduce you." And I was like, "Okay." And then he introduced he introduced us to Hosier, and we were like, "Thanks so much, man. It was so nice to meet you." And went back to our table. And then they like announced the biggest award of the night to Diplo. And then the man that just introduced me to Hosier like walked on stage. And I was like, got it. Work It was something that came out of the blue uh, and something that I always wanted to do, but just never expected it to be that uh, project. I read it and I instantly just fell in love with the idea of playing someone that had no rhythm, can't dance, and finds herself uh, through through dance and through music and just kind of like, she definitely has a really beautiful character arc throughout the film and that was something that I was looking for. Um, and then signed on as a producer and signed on to the movie and that was the first movie that I was signed on to as a producer so it was really exciting for a lot of reasons. And it just became something different than what it initially was in the first place. I think the chemistry between uh, these people that I now am good friends with and, and love very much uh, created something really special that I hope, I hope people like. I hope it makes them want to dance. For me, it was a very, very big reminder that I haven't stretched in seven years. And I I was like, I can dance. Like, it's something that you don't lose. You don't lose your ability to dance. And I grew up dancing for, for many years and then I'll dance on tour. I even got tendinitis. That's how you know, like, I really put, I really tried, you know? Um, <laughs> I feel so cool saying that, even though it hurts so bad. And it reminded me how much I, I do love to dance. But my first, my first rehearsal was a little rough. There was a lot of freestyling going on. And I also had to counteractively at the same time be, uh, teaching myself how to dance poorly and off rhythm and uh, kind of being in my body for the end of the movie and then being completely out of my body for the first half of it. So, so that was fun. I was 10 years old and I was on Law & Order Special Victims Unit. I played a victim named Paula and I remember vividly always wanting to like get into film and television as a young girl by watching like sitcoms and watching uh, funny movies and so I never thought that I would, would want to do drama and then the first thing I booked was pretty hard hitting drama but don't look it up. I look so small and it's just not necessary. <laughs> I was really, really fortunate to open up for um, a few shows on her Dangerous Woman tour, which was a, a really significant tour for a lot of reasons. One, her fans are incredible, and I've never felt like so much love from someone else's crowd, so that's uh, something to say about her, because I, I think she's she's so incredible with her fans and and uh, they're incredible to her and they're wonderful to me and she was wonderful i think she's one of the funniest people i've ever uh had the privilege of meeting the first time i watched boy meets world i had to be around eight years old it was definitely like what was playing on my tv in the morning before i would go to school what matters is what i see in you and what you see in me what i see in you i always 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 was in love with the show for a lot of reasons but like I definitely saw myself a lot in Topanga played by Daniel Fishel who's now one of my best friends so it's a really really weird full circle life moment everything about that show felt authentic so I think I just really resonated with it first time I appeared on Girl Meets World, I was prepubescent and, uh, <laughs> and just very much didn't know what I was doing. But all I knew was that I had dreamed of being on my own Disney show at that point. And obviously, like, I got so lucky to be a part of something that was very much a legacy and, and uh, held a lot of memories and nostalgia for a lot of people. So um, I was 13 when we shot the pilot. 
um, and probably like 14 when it aired. I only got one A in Spanish. You're not getting into a good college with only one A in Spanish. You loved me once. I literally went through puberty on that show. I went through all the stages of high school and was actually doing school on set. So holds a lot of memories. I believe I was nine years old, and it was a Taylor Swift song called uh, Picture to Burn. I loved her songs. I loved Christina Aguilera. I loved Adele. I would cover those three artists, like all the songs that they had, and then my parents would always be like, why don't you try Sinead O'Connor? Why don't you try Ozzy Osbourne? So it's, it's really quite the um, collection of artists that I covered from like age nine on. The first time I sang with my sister, Sarah, oh, we were, we were so young, but one of the, the vivid memories I have of us is uh, we covered Happy Days by Judy Garland and Barbara Streisand. Shout hallelujah. And we still love it. Like anytime that song comes on, we will give a full performance. I was with her yesterday. We've actually been trying to figure out the trajectory of our friendship and how it developed into what it is because all we remember is like meeting once. It was at some charity event or something or, oh, I think it was at Variety's Power of Youth event. And she came over to me and she was like, hi, are you Joey King? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, I like your movies. And I was like, thanks. And she was like, I'm Sabrina. And I was like, okay, nice to meet you. Uh, Cause that's what we sound like when we're like, you know, 12. And then later we just became best friends. There was really no in between. We look good. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I don't know. We, we met each other, we vibed, but at that point we were probably 12. And so we weren't at the place where we were gonna exchange info. So we just hoped that the universe would like allow us to find each other again. And it did many times. And then we found our uh, common love for Sherlock, the series with Benedict Cumberbatch. So anytime that a new episode was coming on, I'd have an excuse to have a friend. And so I'd tell her to come over and we'd watch it. And then, um, and then that's how we became really close. I wanna say I was 16 and uh, I was enamored to the point where I was like, I need to see this again. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but like, I need to see it again. So I ended up going back, somehow seeing it again. And the second time that I went, cause after the first time I tweeted Lynn, I was just like, I'm in love with you. Like not in a creepy way, but like, I love you. Um, and he responded to me and he he was a fan of, of the show. He's a fan of Boy Meets World and then a fan of Girl Meets World, which I was like blown away. And so then the second time I went, I went backstage to meet him after the show was over. And when I tell you like, I have only been starstruck twice, three times in my life. And it was when I was 10 years old and I met Miley Cyrus, because that makes a lot of sense. It was when I met Beyonce for the first time and it was when I met Lin-Manuel. And I didn't know what to say to him after I watched Hamilton, because I just felt stupid. I was like, great show. Like, I don't know what you say, because like, he's just sweating. He's like living and breathing. Um, and he's so, so incredibly talented. So um, I am that annoying friend that will sing every word too. My first legal drink was... This is me after one shot of tequila. I was too drunk to remember. This is me after two shots of tequila. It was champagne. This is me after three shots of tequila. <laughs> and then one too many shots of tequila. Hey guys, this is me. Because I was literally in quarantine on my 21st birthday, I was like, at this point, this is just, I literally spent the whole night making a TikTok. <laughs> 